uh, without any further ado, let's bring in my guests. Like I said, uh, a lovely couple, uh, Christy and Jay, uh, Puddles and Passport. So they're with us. Uh, let me bring them on board. So Jay family, I got you guys on screen. I just have to make sure I unmute your mic. All right, Jay and Christy, thank you so much for joining my show. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we're excited to be here. Yeah. Hello, thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure and uh, many of you guys saw my intro video where, um, or their intro video shall I say, where you guys did an amazing job by the way with that video and I featured that on my channel, a uh, lot of comments. So you guys sold everything went on a world trip and I'm glad that we are going to talk more. So uh, first of all, why don't you guys tell me a little bit about who you are, how long you guys been married and all the good stuff before we get into the action. Okay, <laughs> to me. Hi, hello everyone out there watching. Thanks for tuning in and thank you for the opportunity to be on your show. This is a lot of fun. So we're excited to get mm -hmm. to know the viewers and you a bit more. Uh, so I'm Christy, this is Jay. Uh, I'm from Maryland originally. He's from England. We met in Texas in 2004, got married in 2006, and we've been living in Texas ever since. Um, we had our two kiddos in 2015 and 2018, and then circumstances in life, and we've always been planning to travel. We've always been big travelers and um, saved up our, our vacation time at work to go fun places, and we thought, well, while our kids are young, we might pick up and do a big trip. Uh, while they're still young before they're in school full-time and so uh, we saved up for quite a while and then we we still have our house we rented it out out in Texas um, but yeah we hit the road in September of 2019 uh, with the intentions of traveling for at least a year uh, COVID of course threw a big wrench into all that which I'm sure we'll get into later yeah. in the mm -hmm. interview we're gonna be talking a lot about all that yeah but that's us in a nutshell what have I missed? no that's pretty much <laughs> Where we are, so happily married. Happily <laughs> married, and uh, you guys are very similar to us. And I said this before: uh, you have a boy and you have a girl. I think your oldest is a girl, and then your youngest is a boy, right? Yeah, Chloe's five, and Camden is two. Chloe and Camden, and uh, I have two kids. So first one is Amelia, and my second one is Liam, and they're both uh, five years apart. Um, we we've been going back and forth quite a bit of times, uh, try to get you guys on the show, and. Uh, as soon as I uh, checked your channel, I think, I don't know how I came up uh, across your channel, I forgot. I saw that, you know, you guys travel and I saw one or two videos about uh, your, your time in Australia, which we'll get to soon. I fell in love and uh, luckily after weeks and weeks of, or yeah, a couple of weeks of back and forth, uh, I managed to, to get you guys here. So um, thank you very much once again, guys, for, for being here. Um, yeah, I see a lot of people yeah. here. Like I said, I don't know why sometimes I'm, I, I lose the uh, chatter, so I can't see. I see Nomad Honda that you're here, Arthi. I see that you're here too. So uh, thank you. Um, now, when somebody decides to travel, okay, uh, especially like what you guys did, saying I'm gonna sell everything I have and then travel the world, that's already tough if you're single. But you guys pulled that trigger with two kids and you just decided to say that's it and uh, a lot of people immediately when you talk about travel they talk about cost we all think that it's expensive so tell me you, you already mentioned briefly in the beginning that you but, but tell me how long did you guys plan this and how did it came to life and who, one of you were scared, and I'm sure one was pushy, so tell me how that played out. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer this one. So um, we started thinking about this trip, um, at least the idea of traveling around the world um, before we had children. And it was something that Christy and I, like Christy mentioned, we've always loved traveling. Um, obviously with myself being from England and Christy being from the Maryland area, um, most of our travel uh, during when we were working time, when I was running a soccer club and Christy was working at a, a consulting firm, right. uh, most of our travel was going to visit family. But we would always try and fit in different trips. Like when we went to England, we would try and spend an extra week over in Europe, a different European country, to go and get that kind of uh, added uh, added travel. 
and then we do a lot of travel around the US. So we always had a passion for travel as part of our marriage. Um, but then we con- we started, I think we were in New Hampshire actually on a road trip and we were just sitting in a bar one night and we were like, what if we were to travel around the world full time for a year? Um, and it was just an idea, you know, so we kind of went back and forth on it. And then a year passed and then another year passed and um, and then we uh, we were getting closer. We were talking about having children. Uh, well, should we do it now? And it wasn't quite the right time. So we started saving and we actually opened up a bank account and we we named it after our trip that we were going to do. Right. And it was going to be the account, we named it the 1218 account and it was going to be uh, 12 different countries over 18 months. Um, that's not necessarily what we ended up doing, but that was the plan. So we, we started saving monthly um, and putting money aside. And then we had children and then we were like, well, we're going to do this trip around the world. We're going to do this. Yeah. Uh, so we just pulled the trigger and we just decided to do it. And, you know, we didn't necessarily sell everything we owned. We sold an awful lot of stuff. Um, we sold a car. Um, we sold. We went through pretty much every single room in our house and cleaned out every single drawer. We had a couple of garage sales. We were selling stuff on Craigslist. We were selling stuff on Offer Up. We were. I mean, it was crazy. Every. Chris will tell you the story, but uh, I felt like every day I was driving down to Chile's to meet someone to sell something else. Um, and we were, we were trying to build up with the pounds as much as we could uh, to go on this trip. Uh, and then, like, yeah, in 2019, we ultimately pulled the trigger and uh, we set off and flew to Italy. So, yeah, so I would say it was about 18 months before we actually left mm-hmm. that we seriously decided to, no kidding, plan you know, everything from what to do with our dogs, should we rent or sell the house, what to do with our stuff, start the garage sales, start the decluttering. So it really it was an 18-month process of officially, no kidding, starting a to-do list of how to mm-hmm. ultimately leave the country for over a year. So, yeah, and then that with the savings ahead of, the, ahead of time was kind of our, our timeline. And I had paused my career when we had Chloe in 2015. Yeah. So I was at home with videos already. So I was in sort of a more mobile position, I suppose, um, not having a, a nine to five, you know, day job, so to speak. <laughs> so I was, I was in a great position to switch locations for a while. Okay. And uh, I believe you, because you had so much time, you were the one that planned the trip, right? Just to where to go, where to stay and how long and all that. And then Jay was just supporting you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so I am a planner by nature for sure so I was more the logistics I look at the flights we talk about dates we talk about where we yeah. go we the decisions of where to go and when and for how long were mutual but then like the nitty-gritty did a lot of that <laughs> the homebody planner white knuckle kind of person and so <laughs> it was his nudge that actually got us to the airport ultimately and out of the country for so long so way out of my comfort zone totally worth it but mm-hmm. you know not something I mean, I'll admit it, I don't think it's something I would have done. I'd like to think I would have, but, yeah. you know, on my own. So we definitely pushed each other's talents and guts on a lot of this. So Yeah, and I think... Um, it's always... Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Jay. Say. No, I was going to say so September 2019, and before we left, Christy had pretty much booked everything, all accommodation, flights, trains, everything was booked from uh, De- September or December. Like, Christmas pretty much around up. Christmas yeah. so and we'd saved up and had that all that paid so that was really awesome that we you know the savings that we'd kind of come up with gave um, us really gave us a really good kickstart the first few months yeah. um and, and that's it was nice a good point. Up. yeah I will say it was a rough transition transitioning from having everything booked to then now you switch to like you're planning on a rolling mm-hmm. basis that yeah. was quite an because even though I'm a planner you know having two kids you're you're busy all day and you're tired and, so, mm-hmm. and, you're, and you're exploring yeah. new places enjoying it and so then to like be contacting airbnbs or looking at flights and things change every day and um you know we left some bookings later than we had anticipated and learned lessons the hard way which we know to be true about waiting last minute for some things so anyway that was a, a lesson we learned on the road for sure <laughs> it was how to how to plan on a rolling basis mm-hmm. i mean as much as you plan all this which is great but we also shouldn't forget that, like you mentioned, with two kids, there's a lot of yeah. things that are unpredictable. And I think I said to you guys when we were chatting earlier, at least for us, yes, I have two young kids, but I always have uh, my mother-in-law who tags along with most of our trip. And that's very helpful. So I can imagine both of you, 
no outside help and 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 it's not easy so so again kudos to you guys you just mentioned about yeah. your two dogs and i believe you said 13 <laughs> and 14 right i want to come back to to talk about that in a bit but before i do that i just also want to mention there's 13 people here talking guys uh i appreciate every single one of you i think most of you are i'm very familiar but i don't know if there's any new uh people in here uh if you are uh and you're not subscribed to my channel please do but at the same time um i put in uh puzzles and passports uh social media handle like i normally do here at the bottom uh you have their instagram page uh puzzles and passport 4 uh, these guys are quite popular on Instagram. I think you guys are something like 25k followers. Um, they're doing just as well on on Facebook. Uh, I, I saw it earlier. You had 2k, and then obviously their YouTube page, which is Puddles and Passports. The link is on the description, um, and you also have it on the featured page. So, uh, if you're into traveling, which most of the guys here are please don't forget to go check them out um, subscribe to their channel do the usual thing and I always say this it doesn't cost money right you're just supporting and uh, if it is something that you enjoy uh, you should definitely uh, should follow them um, Christy you mentioned you know 18 month planning and all that and she documented all that on her website which is www.puddlesandpassports.com uh, there's a section dedicated to all that and I think you had 10 or 12 blogs uh, blogs about all the uh, things that you guys did before your trip and during the trip if I'm not wrong so uh, check it out and so uh, sorry say that again uh, no, I think there's close to 30 posts on the website now of all the different things so it's uh Chris has worked hard on there you go. putting that together Thanks. Well, so it's a, and we're always looking for new content ideas so anyone out there want have any questions or ideas you'd like to mm -hmm. talk about or collaborate about um, we're always open to new ideas so yeah have a look and let us know what you think I like the word uh, let's come back to, 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 to your two dogs so you guys have two dogs 13 and 14 that you left behind I want to oh. tell me I'm sure that's not an easy easy decision to leave and, and your kids how do they feel about all this yeah, well, so our children are young. So Camden was under 18 months when we left. So, so he's kind of along for the ride. He's happy-go-lucky. He keeps us grounded some days. And then um, Art was four and a half when we left. And so we involved her a lot in the process. We involved her in decluttering, you know, giving away some of her toys. She set up a little cupcake stand when we had our garage sales. So we, we kind of explained to her how we were going to be moving around for about a year, but we would return to her room and how we're going to have a friend come rent. And so to get to um, your question about the dogs, those dogs have been my companions for over a decade and they were my first little babies. And so it was, it was definitely an issue to decide what to do with them if we were to take this long mm -hmm. extended travel journey right. and um, we tried a few different renters we tried um, getting a few leases in place ultimately what happened was we found um, a family friend whose son was looking for a place to live and he's very happy to take care of dogs he grew up with dogs you know his mother and their family very well and so it just worked out that he was willing to rent our house and he seems to really love it there now and he mm -hmm. takes great care of the dogs and it's comforting to me knowing that we didn't have to displace them because mm -hmm. they've spent their whole lives in our house and I know that they're still in their kitchen in their backyard right. eating from their bowl you know everything's familiar and so while he hasn't they have a new owner for several months plan to go back, back and um, from what we can tell oh, from gosh. regular up and they're doing great so it's the best um, situation we could have hoped for, really. <laughs> I never had, well, I shouldn't say I never had pets. When I was back home, I had, and I still remember, I'm from Sri Lanka, there was a little bit of a civil war there, right? So I still remember, we had two dogs, I forgot their names, but the the sadness that I felt when we saw these dogs for the last time, I don't know. And I mean, as a kid, it's lucky that you guys involved them early on, so your, your oldest kind of knew what was going on, but... Uh, to me, that's a that's a tough decision. Now, you sold everything. Eighteen month planning. 
you guys packed up and like you said you went to the airport and you, you just hit you hard and you guys decided to go to Italy first yes so that is tell, oh, go ahead yeah so tell me out of all the places like you could start your trip I don't know Australia if you wanted to but why Europe is there a special reason as to why you wanted to hit Europe and mainly Italy first well yeah so I'll start it and then you can tell why I went mm -hmm. to Italy but um, we did have a little practical goal of literally traveling around the world and so we were thinking well should we start east or should we start west around the globe and it made sense to go east you know he's Europe we had he and we could go visit and um, we chose Italy so our departure date uh, was our yep. 40th birthday so that was a very sort of banner day in our family for sorry uh, who's 40th wow yeah so we flew to That's my That's quite a gift yeah we flew to my dad's house um, before his birthday for a, a short stay and a goodbye and to see him. And then we left the D.C. area on Jay's birthday, bound for Italy. And we chose Italy because... So I had been training for the past six to eight months for my first Ironman. So um, we figure as early as possible in the trip so that we wouldn't be uh, having to haul a bike around the world and having to go find places to go swim and all that stuff from my training so on. Uh, literally, we flew into Bologna. We spent five nights in Bologna. It was a lovely city. Yeah, that was so there. fun. I'd go yeah. back in a heartbeat. And then we um, caught the train to Sevilla. So about, about four days into our trip, um, to kick it off, yeah. I did the uh, um, Italy Ironman, um, which was my first ever. Um, absolutely loved it. It was a remarkable way to kick mm -hmm. off the uh, trip. Um, and your mom and brother came over, yeah. so he had a little, little support crew. He had his own little fan club on the beach when he ran off into the waves. It was wow. cool. It was very cool. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I love this because I, we, you had no idea. So I'm, I'm quite happy. So you trained for an Ironman, and that's why you decided to go to Italy first. And how did you do on your uh, first uh, competition? I finished. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a good, that's good to know. <laughs> finished very strong he beat he beat what he wanted to do for himself he yeah. beat his own goal for himself so it was awesome yeah it was um it was an amazing experience so i actually started doing a couple of um after i sold our soccer a youth soccer coaching company yeah um i kind of wanted something different to kind of you know occupy a lot of my time and so i started uh, doing some triathlons and i did a couple of sprints and, and then i signed up for an olympic and um and then instead of going to the half ironman I just jumped straight onto the full Ironman um, and I just figured why not and I was figured if I'm going to do the Ironman it's probably a once in a lifetime thing for myself <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd rather do it as a destination race um, so we just we had a look at what was going on in the September for the Ironman uh, series and uh, we ultimately chose Italy and it was convenient because it was in Europe so like my mum and my brother they flew over so they were just absolutely huge that really helped um, and then yeah, yeah and then after that it's been all downhill since then for me so. well that's a that's a great way to, to initiate your trip and having a family there to support you that's a, that's a bonus now uh, how long did you guys spend in Italy and what are all the places that you've been to or what did you accomplish and how did your yeah. kids uh, reacted to all this they have been really great they mm -hmm. in in some cases they have been more resilient and flexible and adaptive than we have been so the the lessons go both ways <laughs> between parents and children mm -hmm. for sure yeah. um we, we started off wanting to travel slowly and by slowly we mean spending at least three plus weeks in a place just so we could figure out what the grocery store was figure out how to work yeah. all the appliances in the house get people's sleep schedules you know back on some sort of track and and then just enjoy it and so that didn't play out the way we had hoped and we still as we continued traveling tried as hard as we could to allow ourselves time in a place to just relax and settle in um, but so Italy was quite a whirlwind because we did five nights in Bologna then several nights in Serbia and then we took the ferry from Ancona Italy the overnight ferry okay. which was also a new adventurous experience I was not banking on like two weeks into this trip was an overnight ferry with our two little ones traveled across <laughs> to Croatia 
to Split. And then we yeah, were in Split nice. for seven nights, which was great. We had, we had a fun time in Split. And then we flew up to Munich for the last couple of days of Oktoberfest. Wow. So first three countries, so Italy, Croatia, and Germany. And, and I, we were in Munich about... Sorry. And I believe you had the, uh, you have the Oktoberfest uh, video uh, on your channel. Yeah, you just published. yeah, so we just published that last week and it's kind of interesting because back when we started this trip, YouTube really wasn't something that we were thinking of doing. We, just, we knew we wanted to do blogging and we were going to write some articles and document our travels that way. Right. Uh, but we didn't really think we would do the whole YouTube thing. So a lot of the... Uh, here we are. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> um, a lot of the... Um, <laughs> footage if you like that we which um it was just photos we took so many photos so putting right. that video together last week was really hard because i've got like five second clips two second clips just random stuff that i just pieced together um but yeah we brew it together so that's that's the last video that we've got on our youtube channel almost recently um but Oktoberfest, that was uh, so christy got um very sick when we mm. arrived in munich and <laughs> like I was bedridden for yeah. like seven or eight days. It was we, awful. We I don't were know what it was. Yeah. yeah, we were there for thirteen thirteen days. Yeah, it was days. easily the most expensive um, accommodation that we had in the entire trip. But we got um, our money's worth. So I never left that bed. <laughs> yeah, she was. Oh girl, she was so sick. So Oktoberfest was just a bunch of so with, with me yeah. and Chloe. So we, it was awesome. So we got to see a very different side of uh, uh, Oktoberfest, and we certainly weren't late night dancing on the tables, as you can imagine. <laughs> it's um, probably best for everyone. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to get sick when you travel. I mean, especially when you have two young kids that you have to look after, and somebody being sick, that's not easy. So well, kudos I, to the dad for stepping yeah, up. I just kept thinking how thankful I was that it was me and not one of the kiddos. I mean, it was awful. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine one of them suffering through that sort of a stomach bug. Oh. Well, well, Chloe did when we were in... Oh, um, then later in the trip, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so around the January time, we were in Chiang Mai and okay. in Thailand, and Chloe came down with... Oh, she was so sick. Um, and we actually we had to take her to the emergency room um, in Chiang Mai, which was a whole other experience because I don't speak the language and mm. there's no... no or signage and um, so it was a really difficult experience having to navigate through that and you know getting in the taxi to get over there and, um, and ultimately she had the flu and she'd had flu shots before well, flu shot before right. we left the US but she caught the flu um, but yeah she was ever so sick and it was scary because we're in this foreign country and um, I'd say difficult to navigate around at the best of times in Chiang Mai um, so but that was quite a unique experience but fortunately we you know we had some, we had some insurance i, I was gonna ask to so okay so i mean obviously if you're traveling the world you're prepared right you have everything that you need in terms of coverage right so we priced out travel insurance that had medical coverage as a component to it before we left um and so we have uh medical coverage for like new things that would arise or come up as a result of traveling or on our trip and so we we pay and then submit for reimbursement and so far that's worked out well for what we um but yeah that instance in Chiang Mai when Chloe was sick was pretty scary yeah it was probably one of the most scariest parts of our entire trip mm -hmm. would you say yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. see I I love my kids when we travel I th there are certain things that I'm paranoid about is is I need them in my eyesight at all times, no matter where I'm at, or I have all mm -hmm. kind of things going in my mind. And again, you know, when you talk about travel and vacation, it's happiness. You don't think, oh, I'm going to fall sick or something. No, but these are things that, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate that my wife takes care of all that, where I never have to stress about it. But um, I wouldn't want that to any parents. I mean, no. Mm -hmm. I want to bring you back back to Europe a little bit. So. Within Europe, you mentioned you've been to Croatia, and I believe you guys uh, went to Hungary and all that places, right? Right. Well, so after Munich, we went down right. to southern Germany. We went to a, a town called Garmisch Partenkirchen, thanks to the recommendation of my dad, who hmm. uh, brought in Germany for several years with my mom. I was actually born over there, um, but then moved to the States when I was young. So he, he knew the area well enough to give us some recommendations, probably the best recommendation. Beautiful. of our trip. So we stayed down in Garmisch for a month 
and it was right in the fall when the leaves were turning and towards the end of our tour right. a few snowfalls mm -hmm. and the mountains and the air it, it was just like a postcard it was lovely and, and my dad came to visit us there too which was oh, awesome you guys are lucky uh, your family is yeah. hopping and, and paying us <laughs> a visit well for the first time I started talking to Jay I was like you know I, I think we chatted for a good 45 minutes I was driving and we're on the phone I hung up I'm like well at least in the initially when you call him like He's an American, but he has, I, th I right away, I'm like, he has an Australian accent. That's probably because I watched your videos and I'm like, oh, he must be Australian. Yeah. But you mentioned language while we're traveling. I mean, with our kiddos, when we would go to a different country, um, we tried to look up on YouTube how to say hello ah, and mm -hmm. thank you and goodbye. You know, maybe those three, maybe a fourth phrase, just so that yeah, as we're walking kids, around and so. we see people on the streets, mm -hmm. we can wave or we can say thank you or we can greet someone. Um, because, you know, it felt like the right thing because I wanted mm -hmm. to be able to greet someone in their language. Um, and then our kids loved it. And, you know, kids are sponges and they absorb it quicker than we do. So they would remind us how to say things mm -hmm. when we're out at a restaurant. So it was kind of, it was cool. So, mm -hmm. But ultimately, we'd love to stay in a place long enough to to be immersed enough to learn a language. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Well, you're, you're, uh, I'm sure your kids are going to grow up inspired to travel and they're going to appreciate every single thing, right? They may be too young, they may not remember, but I know when it comes to my daughter, she loves it. Uh, she's eight, uh, we get her engaged, planning and, and all that, so uh, they will benefit from all this tremendously, whether it's languages, different cultures and so on, right? I have a question from one of the guys here. Yeah. Uh, which insurance company would you guys recommend? So we and all why? Yeah, so we ultimately went with uh, World Nomads, um, and to the why. I mean, you can you've done more of the. Uh, Sorry, you why. said World Nomads. World Nomads, N O M A D S, um, and they in it. So the way they work is they cover us as long as we're a hundred miles away from our primary residence, which obviously is in in Texas. Um, then we're covered. So like we're down in uh, Florida right now, so we're covered right now. Um, because we're 100 miles from our residence, um, but if we go home, then we've got to get back onto you know a, a different, a more um, a local plan or US-based plan. And, uh, you guys mentioned well earlier that sometimes it's cheaper when you're traveling than being home, right? Yeah. Yeah, it depends on where you go and what you can mm -hmm. find affordable accommodation for. Like Chiang Mai, eating out and accommodation was very affordable, and then you know paying for health insurance self-pay or what's the one looking to get mm -hmm. paying for a health insurance plan in the United States versus paying for our travel insurance when we're abroad is a significant reduction in that cost to our household budget. Um, so that was a nice little extra. <laughs> so on the insurance one, just to kind of put some numbers on it, we're paying $600 less now per month than what we were paying when we were doing insurance in the U.S. So health insurance, health insurance. Yeah, so health insurance versus travel insurance plan that we so it is definitely cheaper to travel and uh, looks like uh, the gentleman that asked the question has the same insurance so I would assume that that's a very popular company because I've never heard of it um, again I want to stick around with Europe um, and the reason why is I want you guys to talk to me about Budapest and the reason why is I did Budapest last year we spent a week and I absolutely loved it I don't know how long I spent in, in Budapest because I drove around the whole country but Budapest for me was magical. We did the Budapest Castle. I can't pronounce the right name, but if you guys know, if you've been around, there's a little pond thing where you can do the boat. Uh, we did that. So we walked, and then while we were walking, we saw that, and then... We walked through Heroes Square, and then over that little bridge, and there's a big thermal bath. Yes. And so my wife and my daughter went to thermal bath. I don't know why I didn't go. I think that's because we had to keep our son. So we kind of decided that we we're going to take turns. Yeah. But they stayed and they had so much fun that yeah. by the time they came back, I'm like, I'm exhausted. Let's just move on. Mm -hmm. um, Hero Square, you just mentioned. And then the uh, St. Matthias Church. Mm -hmm. I, I saw a picture, you guys. I think we have one exactly similar. But uh, tell me, how was your experience? And... Um, anything that you like, you disliked? Yeah, 
so we uh, we were in Budapest um, just after Germany. So that means that put us in Budapest like mid November through like mid December. And so we were there right when the Christmas markets were opening, which mm -hmm. was magical. It was just beautiful. Like in front of the cathedral, there was a beautiful market with an ice skating rink, and you have all the food vendors and all the gifts and everything. It was just magical. It was beautiful. We had we had great running routes. Jay and I mm -hmm. both run, and so we'd run up to is it Gellert Hill. There was that gr there was that green hill across one of the bridges on the Buddha side of the river, um, and it was beautiful. And just the routes along the river and through the town down the main streets to here a square. Yeah, I mean we enjoyed it. It was lovely. Yeah. Chloe and I went on a couple of dates out exploring because like Budapest is known also for their their cakes and their mm. um, confectionery. You know, so we tried samples and had fun. yeah. It was just magical. It was beautiful to be there at Christmas time. Yeah, I would say from my standpoint, um, there was three things that I loved about Budapest. It was the ruin bars. Um, so I actually went out on a ruin bar tour one yeah. evening. Um, that was awesome going to those different, real funky, unique um, bars. Um, I went to the baths uh, three different times. I was going to make a video and or do a blog post about all these different baths that were there, but. It didn't quite seem right walking around these bars with my camera, so I decided against doing that. Um, and also, <coughs> excuse me, was this December we were there, wasn't it? So this was going on a year ago now, and uh, that was the last time we actually had eight night because Rick. Uh, yeah, my dad came to visit again. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm loving your parents; they're very, uh, very supportive here. Yeah, no, yes. he was awesome. He came over to Budapest and to Garmisch Parkenkirk. So. Yes, and incidentally, that's the last time that we have seen him because our plans, because of COVID now in 2020, mm -hmm. have been derailed as everyone's, as everyone else's have as well. And so we're, you know, making the most out of FaceTime and you know what everyone else yeah, is doing. It's, it's funny. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> we uh, oh, as you see, your dad is watching, right? Well, good dad. Um, yeah. Amazing dad. <laughs> um, me and my wife, every time we travel, we say, okay, we're going to take a day. Uh, it's going to be a date night for us. Yeah. But believe it or not, you know, out of all these times, we are so busy doing something that it never happens. And I, I was going for a ride with her earlier, and she's like, yeah, maybe we should go on a date night. And sometimes I, I think I take it for granted. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I should focus and, and take you out. Not necessarily when we travel, which we don't even end up doing, but at least here it's it's important to have uh, some some good time with with your significant other. Um, yeah, we need to do more. I mean, that's something one of our that biggest would, challenges for the whole trip, hasn't it? It has been one mm -hmm. of our biggest challenges for sure. In fact, we were realizing it through the European portion of our trip that we really needed to make a more concerted effort to, like you're saying, have the couple time. Yeah. And to where when we got to Western Australia in late January. We spent the month of February in Perth and so we looked into some like preschools mm -hmm. in Perth and enrolled the kids twice a week just for the four weeks we were there so that we had like two date mornings um, each week for the four weeks that we were there and the kids got time with peers, they got to meet new teachers, we found the great greatest little preschool right in the Victoria Park neighborhood of Perth where we were staying mm -hmm. or close to where we were staying. It was nice. It was good for everyone in the family to have mm -hmm. a little bit of a different balance for a while. I'm going to circle back yeah. on, on Australia. Uh, I wanted to kind of come back, but you guys uh, talked about it, but I will come back. There's another question here from the same gentleman that says, what did they use to get tickets? What is the best way to find air tickets to places? Have they used Google Flights? Yeah, Google Flights is a great one. And then the other two sites that I frequently use are Skyscanner and Mamondo. Also, thanks, Dad, for the tips. <laughs> um, so, Skyscanner, sorry, guys. Skyscanner is one. What's the other one? And Mamondo. How do you spell that? Oh, M-O-N-O. M-A-N-D-O? Yeah, if you Google it, you can find it. Mamondo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just Google it, guys. I mean, uh, worst case scenario, you, you guys can send it to me and I'll update the description. And I believe you have this on your blog post as well. Or am I wrong? I think we do somewhere like sites that we use, travel resources. Yeah, I don't think they're on the resources page. But one, what we do, just going back to talking about the flights, is we look at multiple um, airline. Sorry, multiple websites where they kind of search different airlines. 
and then we'll compare them to each other. Then, depending on how flexible we are, we might look at flying out a day or uh, coming yeah. back a day later. Um, a lot of them were one ways um, because we would just keep them moving. Um, and uh, also, incidentally, sorry, we didn't end up on like discount carriers as much as we thought we would. Mm -hmm. It just so happened that we were able to go on um, larger, kind of more standard, traditional carriers throughout Europe yeah. and even over to Asia. It just worked out that way for um, schedule and pricing and whatnot. And a couple of times we used miles. Mm -hmm. So we've been saving air miles for years. And so when it made sense, we would splurge and, and use those. But I'll say almost every time. The best deals we found were on Skyscanner or Momando, and then we would actually go to, we wouldn't necessarily book directly through those two companies, we would then go to the airline uh, website okay. uh, to compare and if we could find that same itinerary at Rocket there, um, because if we, the credit card that we use for our travel, uh, we get five time points if we book directly through the airline. Um, and they add up, I mean, especially with the travel that we've been doing and, you know, it's afforded us a couple of uh, free flights as we've, um, in fact, it got us from Croatia to Germany, didn't it? Mm -hmm. All of us, so, yeah. for free. And, yeah, I used Google flights to get back to the States because we didn't have, we, it didn't matter what uh, city we flew into necessarily because mm -hmm. we booked internal flights then to get to Florida. So we used Google flights to just decide whether to fly into Chicago, San Francisco, L.A., you know, Dallas, you know, from Perth or Sydney ultimately. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think one of the misconceptions people have is, is travel. They think that it's, oh my God, you know, the, the flagship carrier is always expensive. But really, if you really do your homework and you save mm -hmm. up money, and in, I know you guys mentioned you had a bank account which was called 1218. And in my case, mm -hmm. we always put like uh, the bonus money that I get for my work. We put it into a bank mm -hmm. account that goes to travel and we plan a year ahead yeah. so we yeah. save right so most people were like oh my goodness here you go you guys pulling another trip how the hell do you do it well we save enough and we we give up certain other things is because we love travel right so uh, well it's also i mean if you do your homework as you're going through this i mean we're, we're case in point we're actually doing it right now because we're looking to find somewhere to go and uh, enjoy uh, Christmas and we're hoping to go into the mountains and find a like a log cabin style of, um, experience. That you're, so you're, that's the, within the US or are you planning an international trip? Uh, yeah we're not really <laughs> wanting to get on a plane anytime soon um, that's a whole other story we can talk about if you want to but um, but right now we're going through the whole Airbnb um, situation so Airbnb is interesting because depending on how you, if you just go into Airbnb and just look straight away at the prices that are listed and, and pay that, well then yeah, you're going to pay a lot of money. Um, but if you go in and you actually contact the host, talk to the host, build a relationship with the host, let them know what your budget is, let them know what you're trying to do. And a lot of times they're willing to work with you and they'll add additional discounts. Um, I mean, so we've contacted probably six or seven in the past well today actually haven't we mm -hmm. a different habit and we're, we're starting to go back and forth with them and you know and we'll end up getting a, a place that we're happy with and hopefully it'll be a, a good price but like if we have a whole month for example with an airbnb we're not having to pay for a gas we're not paying for electricity i'm not having to pay to have my the yard done um and what all the other mm -hmm. you know cable internet property taxes um so th it is a bit of a misconception when people think that traveling around the world is like, oh, it must be so, so expensive. Well, there's so many costs that we're not spending by traveling. So that money that we're saving, we can use that for experiences and, you know, um, obviously flights. Flights is expensive, but we've worked out different ways to offset some of those uh, prices as uh, costs as well. So, yeah, you just got to, it it's planning, you know, it's a lot of planning. Um, I want to come back to Airbnb. That's a good point that you mentioned. But then uh, I have another question here. Uh, have you guys been to Canada? Only briefly. Yeah, it, we were in Seattle yeah. several years ago, and we took a day trip up to Victoria in British Columbia, which was amazingly beautiful. Yeah, we, we really to go want to go back to Canada. <laughs> yeah. We really want to go back to Canada. But we we've, we've heard yeah. great things about the Toronto area. So there's still so much to see and. And traveling cross country throughout Canada sounds amazing. So yeah, I've read yeah. Blogs of that. yeah. So yeah, on the bus. <laughs> I did that in this summer. Um, in fact, I, I have 1.6 gig. Uh, sorry, 1.6 terabytes 
worth of data video that I have to still process but I do have a playlist and keep the questions coming and I, I want to quickly do a, another sales pitch of uh, sending you guys to puddles and passports uh, you got the website you got their Facebook you got their Instagram and that's one thing I did not talk I, I mentioned it in the beginning I, I'm, I'm just gonna put a note to myself so that I don't forget you guys are quite popular on Instagram you got 25k if I'm not wrong but what I've really enjoyed about the Instagram side of things is once we got past like I said that 10,000 mark we've actually been able to use it a little bit more to our advantage and we've got several things like mainly accommodation actually we've been able to get accommodation for free um when we were in australia at several places um by giving them shout outs or um we actually did a you know um a video um for a, a caravan site that we stayed at and they put us up in their chalet for a few nights and obviously we did some instagram stuff for them as well so you know once you get past a certain amount it we've started to use it to our favor and it's uh, yeah so it's it's definitely had its benefits and it's helped offsets quite a lot of our costs as well so well and speaking of accommodation when we spoke a few days ago uh we talked about the woofing opportunities yes. the worldwide opportunities on organic farming and so in line with your question about costs and in line with your question about accommodation and he was just talking about how to kind of get some things comped or like to work on an exchange basis you know for for volunteering there are there are woofing organizations in hundreds of countries around the world and so you would sign up for an annual membership with that country's woofing organization and that gives you access to their repository of hosts and hobby farms commercial farms ranches you know anyone who needs any sort of manual labor or other mm -hmm. type of labor but the fat the um purpose is to spread sustainable uh, living practices organic farming practices and so the volunteers work at the farms and then in exchange they get a and, and usually even meals and so we did a woofing experience in Denmark Australia yeah. where the four of us stayed at an eco village and in exchange for free accommodation in their common house um, Jade did some projects around mm -hmm. the community about four hours a day for the well we ended up staying for three weeks but yeah. it was a 10-day yeah. it was a 10-day um, commitment especially yeah. I mean anything you can get I, I don't want to say the word free but Anywhere where you can get some support, where it's offset some of your cost, uh, to me, it's uh, it's always welcome. Um, I'm I'm gonna go back to Airbnb, but before that, I just want to mention if anybody here, um, there's ten of you hanging out, so I I appreciate it and I thank you. And uh, if you haven't given me a th given me a thumbs up, uh, don't forget I see eight thumbs up already, so um, it really helps with the algorithm. So uh, make sure you do it. Um, don't forget to visit Puddles and Passports and don't forget to visit me uh, if you're not subscribed follow me on Instagram and I was telling you guys I'm trying to grow my Instagram within the last two weeks I was able to go from I think I was like 86 to I'm getting close to a thousand so and my policy on Instagram for anyone you follow me I will follow you back I will follow you back and I, I even say it like you guys can't see but one of my main messages unfollow equals unfollow because you have these people that come and play this game comment and like and then two days later they unfollow you so i'm like no please don't do that so if anyone doing that that's a waste of time yeah that's that's very important to us we we really want people that you know are interested in what we're doing and we can engage with and kind of build relationships with and and hopefully we can inspire more families to travel with their kids um one thing we're thinking of doing with the YouTube channel is um, it's probably going to wait till the new year to be fair, but we want to start doing um, how-to videos, so weekly videos about all the things that we've learned over the course of the past 12 months traveling around um, to hopefully help, you know, like I say, inspire some more families to to travel with their kids and, you know, take away a little bit of the fear and the stress and because it can be quite overwhelming and it can be very daunting. Um, but we've learned so much, so much, you know, we've, uh, so we're hoping that we can share some of that through our YouTube channel um, as we move forward. And we were just talking about it right before the show. Um, you quite didn't figure out the niche, your travel, but like say you want to do how-to videos and I showed you the videos that I did. I think we're all in the stages where 
we're not doing anything specific, mm-hmm. but we're enjoying what we're doing. And Jay, you mentioned how you want to put your GoPro on, walk by the beach, <laughs> and upload that video. And I'm telling you, do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. You will be surprised as that could be your number one video for all you know, right? Um, yeah. Remember, my video is, is a model home video that's still giving me the hours and the views. So um, you just can't predict which one. And remember the little story with the, my buddy Cone that sent me last night about one video, 99 million views. So apparently in his channel overall, he has videos that are a couple of thousand. But then apparently he had one viral video where 99 million views, guys. And it's a monetized channel. So imagine the money that they could make. That's going to be my walk on the beach video. <laughs> you never know. And and I always say this. I'm going to touch base with you guys a year from now. I want to see how you're doing. If you're like yeah. this big, you're, you grew, guess what I will do? I had them on my show. So please come, right? <laughs> it's it's going to help us one way or another. And even me. If, Again, I'm hoping that I grow, but if I do grow, guess what? These videos are going to stay on my channel. People are going to come and watch it. And my hope is they come and follow every single one of the guests that I had in this show. So so don't forget to check their Instagram. My likes cam just went up. See, some people, if you don't remind them, they don't do it. So thank you, guys. I, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, I want to come back to Airbnb. Um, I think I know the answer to this. When you travel, I ask whether you prefer hotels or Airbnbs uh, because we're a big supporter of Airbnb and I think you guys are too. So, um, go ahead. So, yeah, with, with little ones, with sleep schedules and them having to take naps and whatnot, it just helps to have doors and bedrooms yeah. where possible and like spaces designated for people to rest and recharge. So, yes. Um, air rental properties have been really great and plus having a kitchen or some some cooking facilities mm-hmm. available so that you can prepare meals and you can pick up some groceries and prepare snacks and have a fridge and things on hand. I will say hotels certainly have come in handy like the night before an early flight. So if we are oh, flying out of yeah. Phoenix or something super early, we'll take the train up, have a hotel for a night and then hop mm-hmm. the train or the the tube or whatever it is over to the airport so we've done lots of one night stays in hotels where it makes sense logistically to like get us as close to that airport as possible because that eliminates an extra leg of travel and an extra unknown of something going wrong with kids and all the stuff and getting to the airport so um yeah airbnbs for staying longer than a few days um and then hotels for those short one or two nights short term kind of you know um mm-hmm. connect the legs of your journey yeah and also, I think uh, Airbnb, uh, you just want to give the feeling of being home, right? Especially if you're with kids. Yeah. They have their rooms and, and, and really, they feel like they're, they're at home. Yeah. Well, it also goes back to what we were saying about how we don't have many, you know, quote, quote date nights. Um, so having the Airbnb, like right now, you know, we're in a house right now and we've got two rooms where we can lock doors and we can have a bit of quiet time and watch the TV or just chat. Um, in a hotel, unless we get two rooms, which we have not done, yeah. um, we don't have that luxury. So Airbnb, Airbnbs, you know, they offer you that space, they offer you the, your home comforts. And honestly, nine times out of ten, it's more affordable because we're staying for usually a week or more and you get better rates the longer you stay. So. Yeah, of course, yeah. Another accommodation option I just reminded myself to talk about is the house sitting. So uh, there is house sitting work all over the world. And so if you're willing to mm-hmm. watch someone's dog or watch the, their cat or their birds or clean their pool or we've seen um, house sitting jobs where they have farm animals. So if you you know, can take care of goats and sheep, <laughs> then you mm-hmm. can do that while the owners go on vacation or their trip and then you get to stay in their house for free. So we've done two house sits on this trip. We did one in Germany for Christmas last year, which turned out mm-hmm. really great. And then we did one in Western Australia yeah. um, last month. So, And we know, I, we don't know them personally, but we've got um, people that we've, we've followed or followed us on Instagram that they travel around the world full time just house sitting. You know, they literally go from one gig to the next and travel around for free um, and get free accommodation free, yeah. all over yeah. the world. So. Yeah. I don't necessarily follow anyone particular like that, but I know my uh, brother-in-law follows a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. My brother-in-law is another traveler. He single. Um, he travels quite a bit, 
and he likes uh, couples or sorry single people that are going countries countries and picking up odd jobs mm -hmm. um, so let's go to Australia you guys are in Europe had a great time then you decided that I think you went to uh, Asia and then you went to Australia right. you're supposed to spend a couple of weeks yeah and then spend about a month maybe five weeks in Western Australia um, and then COVID hit so we were down in Denmark at that woofing job at the eco village in Denmark when um, COVID-19 really escalated quickly this was like early yeah. March and then we had to make some quick decisions um, which was pretty agonizing it was probably the hardest decision that we've had to make in a long time was whether or not to try to remain in Australia or hop on a plane before the world kept shutting down day after day, yeah. flights, less flights, less flights, and huge lines at the U.S. ports of entry and just chaos ensuing everywhere, it seemed. And so we were trying to decide what was best for our family and making a decision on behalf of our children mm -hmm. is stressful. So ultimately, we decided to stay, which turned out to be such a blessing and an unbelievably fortunate you know, chain of events because Western Australia did and has done a little job of flattening their coronavirus curve. And so we felt very safe in Perth, which is where we stayed for their, the height of their COVID. Um, we were in Perth for about 10 weeks, mm -hmm. abiding by all of their social restrictions and social gathering restrictions and distancing and staying home and just going out for essential trips and just watching it unfold throughout the world, you know, thousands of miles away from home is pretty unnerving, but we were in a safe place and yeah. Mm, just and so grateful. So just going back to when we were making that decision, we like like Christy said, we were only going to be in Australia for about four weeks and then we had flights booked to go to uh, New Zealand mm -hmm. and we had accommodation booked up in New Zealand um, and all that was like, you know, moving. And then we got, they obviously everything uh, started to uh, escalate and we got an, uh, an email and it was obviously on the news um, that if you're outside of the US, um, mm -hmm. you need to basically make it remain in place for an unforeseen amount of time or you come home within the next 48 hours so it was a very very stressful time and um, we actually booked flights home we were the next day we were down about five hours south of Perth and we were we booked flights that just got online booked some flights we were going to be flying home the very next day um, and then we we really toyed with it and then we went to bed that night and woke up in the morning and it just didn't feel right it was just like we're not doing this we're not going um so we obviously got on the phone uh, um and <laughs> for two hours and uh cancelled the flights and yeah as christy said it was probably one of the best decisions we've made um but not knowing but not knowing time, no yeah, we had no idea what was time. coming i mean listen uh i think i told you guys too right we we're supposed to pull a trip to sri lanka one yeah. reason or another led to us not going and again I don't regret it looking back. Um, I do want to talk a little bit more about Australia of all the towns or cities that you guys went to but before that I just want to remind everybody on, on this uh, show right now uh, don't forget to check them out Instagram. Um, I see people messaging that they did check your Instagram and stuff so that's good. I highly mm -hmm. encourage you guys doing this and looks like there's another question too so let me see here. Uh, how do you find these people? I mean, how does one find places like that? Is there an organization that one can look in to find places like that? Um, I'm not quite sure if I understand. You guys take a, take a peek, see if you get it. Um, For work, that is, like working at farms or babysitting. So those are two different things. So the first one, it's called WOOFing, and the acronym is W-W-O-O-F for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. And there is a worldwide, my understanding is that there is a worldwide organization, but each country has their own organization. And so each country you would like to travel to and work in, you would pay a fairly reasonable fee for an annual subscription to become a member of that country's woofing organization. And then you have access online to their database mm -hmm. of hosts. And you can contact hosts, ask about the work, ask about what your accommodation would be like, what kind of work expected of you, how long. You could find a woofing stay for two or three days or two or three months. Yeah. It depends on how long you want to stay and how long a host needs you to do whatever job they need done. So that's the woofing that we have experience with. And mm -hmm. then when you say babysitting, I think you mean the house sitting. We 
have an account with housesitters.com, but there are also yeah. country-specific organizations. Like, you had found an Australia-specific an Australia house-sitting. Yeah. So, again, could be location-dependent. If you know what country you want to go to, maybe find a specific website that seems to get good reviews and, and feels like it's legitimate uh, to join, and mm -hmm. then you can search for jobs that way, yeah. and you'll be able to access hosts that post their, their vacation schedule so you'll know when they need someone to come pet sit. Or and what they... Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we have on Ashra Nomad, so, oh, sorry, sorry, no, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, if um, any of the guys that are listening want to kind of read more about these on our resource page on the website, um, we've, we've got them all linked, yeah. so you can link to all of those and kind of learn about them. Mm -hmm. But they're fantastic ways, and that, that was one of the things that we tried to do, is we wanted to have unique and different experiences. We didn't stay in Airbnb for... 12 months or camp for 12 months or mm. house it for 12 months we wanted to have unique and different experiences and try and immerse ourselves and meet different people and meet different families and you know try and get our sent try and get some kind of a sense of community as well as we were going around but um. now you talked about airbnb uh, airbnb how you you message them and you try to negotiate now this is something i don't think we've done it when we log into airbnb you look at it you get the pricing we don't think of reaching out and say, okay, this is my budget, can you do anything? Do you guys do it just because it's COVID-19 and you're taking advantage of the situation or did you always do that? No, and absolutely not. And we certainly never want to take advantage of anybody. I mean, for them, it is a business. Right. You know, and we appreciate it. Um, but the way we've always kind of gone about it is what they, they list a price. And sometimes if you go through them, some of them will have 0% discounts, you know, because we're always, not always, but the vast majority of the times we're staying for a week or longer. Yeah. And not when you go into them, if you uh, a week, you know, then it might offer a 10% discount. If you're there for a month, you know, a monthly rate, sometimes you can get as much as 50% off, you know. And it's our understanding that the host sets that. Mm -hmm. So the host can decide you know, if someone's staying at least seven nights, I'll give mm -hmm. them this. If someone yeah. is staying for thirty days, I'll give them this. Just so every host is a unique scenario. But, but yeah. when we so you look for these, but if you if you don't see any discount listed, then you reach out to them and say, hey, we're planning well, to two weeks. Yeah, even if there is a discount listed, I mean, because the way we're doing it uh, now, which we've um, had some success with, and is we're not just going in and. Right, asking for a discount we recognize that they are a business and yeah. obviously they're trying to make money as well so we try and offer some value to them by potentially you know working with us and having us you know stay in their place so we'll part of our email to them is you know check out our instagram we can give your face a shout out we can do a video you know on our and feature you on our youtube channel i mean um no, and our, oh it's also we also on our uh, destinations page we yeah. have a to, um, preferred accommodation so our favorite accommodation that we've stayed at over the course of the past 12 months will we actually do a write-up on them and we list them there so we offer these kind of stuff so there's a benefit to them as well um, and obviously it's a benefit to us it's a win-win and it's a they say, no and we move on and or we decide you know yeah we really like this place and you know we just won't um, do the things that from an offer standpoint and we'll accept their price and we'll move forward so and uh, talking about that, I still remember when we went to Santorini, uh, my wife booked everything online. But the minute we went to the resort we stayed in Santorini, we got to know the manager quite well. You know, we were always hanging out by the pool in the evening. And she kind of made it aware to us that, hey, uh, I know you guys booked us through, I think Airbnb if I'm not wrong. But she said, if you go to my website, you will actually get another 20 or 30 percent on top of what you got through Airbnb and we both looked at each other like damn it why did we not know this before right so yeah it's such a trade-off because yeah. n not being a local in the you know of the place where you're going to you may not have known like that happened to us in Chiang Mai, in Chiang Mai Thailand also in Kalbari Western Australia we we used our normal means of finding accommodation like the RBO, vacation rental by owner, Airbnb, yeah. and all others. And we found an apartment, but then we, we figured out that that apartment was also managed by a local 
rental company that charges a lot less than Airbnb because they're just in Calvary mm -hmm. and they just have their own group of rentals and you know and so when we came back through Calvary we didn't go through Airbnb we booked directly through that local rental company and saved a portion so yeah. yeah but how are you to know when it's a foreign place and you know Airbnb offers legitimacy and some yeah. protections as well but yeah it's a trade-off to decide what's best given well, where you're going. This is another reason why they should follow your website follow your youtube channel and uh, like i said you know you could be quite the traveler but unless you go to these particular areas and you learn these secrets not everybody's going to have that on their channel right or their blog post yeah. so yeah. all the right reason like why you should follow uh jay and christy i don't know instagram is probably easy right or twitter a uh, couple of lines and boom it's out there for everybody to see right we're not on twitter so <laughs> i can't <laughs> There's only so much you can do. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's the other thing, right? Uh, kind of raise two kids as well at the same time. So. There's so many platforms, and where do you focus your time and energy? I mean, I, I, I get it. It's not easy. If I'm doing Instagram this week, my YouTube is kind of second stage. Or if I go to YouTube, something else falls back. So it's a, it's a trade-off. But there's one question mm -hmm. that my wife, well, well, I told my wife that I got that covered, but I need to ask before I forget. Yeah. I know your kids are young, they may not necessarily be in school, but what is your plan or what was your plan when you're out there traveling the world and your daughter had to attend school? Did you have right. anything in mind or like, how did you plan that? Yeah, so when we left town, uh, when we left our home last September, she was four and a half. She turned five in January, so now she's about five and a half, just over. And so, for and we had planned to be gone for about 12 months, maybe a little bit longer. And so, school um, is not compulsory for that age in Texas. And so, mm. she had been to a preschool for two years previous. And so, I knew what she had learned there. And then, you know, just I worked on reading with her the, the year that we were gone. I used a, a 100 lessons reading. My aunt, uh, which has worked beautifully, mm -hmm. and she's now reading books amazingly on her own and writing which is so cool to see so we worked on that but apart from reading and writing just practicing letters everything else was just um, exposure and experience and you know normal life and traveling and logistics and solving problems and navigating new places and seeing new things so it was just kind of I, I guess for lack of a better term it was kind of a world schooling feel I guess but they were so young yeah. and then camp was not even left mm -hmm. and is yeah, um, and then we were abroad longer than expected, and so this this past September last month, Chloe would have started kindergarten if we were back yeah. in Texas, back in our home, and of course that's not the case. So um, I've been looking at curriculum for kindergarten and giving her some lessons a few times a week, just some math, and again keeping the reading and the writing going. But other than that, it's play and science and gardening and walks outside and nature and just you know that kind of thing. And then next fall when she's she will be enrolled in first grade mm -hmm. somewhere and that's probably the time that we anticipate will be somewhere settled enough that we will enroll her for that first school year before we either move within texas or ultimately move out of texas but i think we see her in a school next year but it's a long way away and there's a lot going on in the world there's a lot yeah. shifting well, you know, i'm seeing so many families and school districts struggling with everything in the world right now yeah. so who knows what will bring mm -hmm. but well, yeah. like I said, it's a year from now, so we don't know. Um, I have a, a, a standard question, if I can use that term, is that I ask everybody that comes on the show. So it's probably like our last few questions before we, we wrap up. Um, mm -hmm. This one, I, this one, I already know the answer. So what do you guys use to film your videos for YouTube? This little bad boy. <laughs> And occasionally yeah. a GoPro. <laughs> and you have a... I do have a GoPro um, Hero Black, I believe it is. And I bought that um, just before we left on the trip in case I wanted to do any video. In. But like I said, going into the trip, YouTubing wasn't really something that we were going to take serious. But yeah, YouTube is interesting because when we got started on this journey, the whole reason for doing it was growing up. I've, I, yeah. to my knowledge, I've got a CD that sits at my house and it's got like a 10 minute clip of me playing soccer and it's got like a five or seven minute clip of me messing around in my bedroom with my dad. Apart from that, I don't have any footage of me when I was a kid. 
okay whereas now it's so easy to take hours and hours and hours and hours of footage but yeah. kind of like with your photos so many people take thousands of photos literally thousands of photos you can ask Christy mm -hmm. uh, um, but to some extent, a lot of people they get lost on their camera and they don't look at them and they'll, you know, every now because they get so far down in your uh, camera roll. Um, but with YouTube, you can actually create your own library and you can create your own little movie theater if you like for your family. Uh, and that's what it, that's how it started, you know. And that's probably how it may continue. Um, and if people enjoy what we're doing and they can find value in what we're doing, then you know, we'd love to have them uh, follow along. Um, but if not, you know, 10, 20 years from now, be, all those videos will be there for our kids to look back. And one of the, my biggest pleasures right now is the kids absolutely love watching these videos. And like before breakfast, some morning, we watch one of your videos, daddy, you know, and they'll sit there and it's great because it gives us some uh, viewing hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you guys, what's your plan with the channel for the next few years? I don't know if it's a redundant question, but if you have any specific plans, goals for the next, uh, I want to say three to five years, um, um, yeah. we can. I, I, I honestly, I can talk <laughs> in six months plans. Um, <laughs> okay. Because like, I think. You, go go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, because when we started this, like I said, it was really to um, document our trip but we also wanted to try and make the videos in a way that if people did want to watch them they could get some value out of them and they could see the places that we've been and so in some of the videos we kind of started like putting in some um, some tips or you know showing like putting in the text about where we were or what we were doing and you know so people found value in that and then we also did a couple of um, you know best things to do in Kalbari or best things to do in Jurian Bay these are places in Western Australia and those have been some of our more successful videos, uh, the how-to videos. Um, sorry, the things to do, should I say. Um, but I think going forward, I mean, I want to continue to, you know, make the videos in a way that when our kids watch them and when we watch them, we can look back and have fond memories of our travels. But I also want to make them in a way that people find value out of them and that hopefully, you know, they get um, value that can help them and inspire them to, you know, travel more with their families. Um and then, as I mentioned earlier, we are considered some how-to, you know, and just real, real short, like five, six-minute videos. Um, and I want to do them in a way where people can just be listening to them, you know, whether they're on a run or they're in the car. They don't have to be sitting watching our, you know, faces. <laughs> um, they can listen to the tips and then get on with the day. And, you know, so because there's so many things that we've picked up over the course of the past 12 months and we'd love to pass on that knowledge to as many people as possible. So. We're still learning. Yeah. yeah, and we're still learning. And still learning. We're by no means experts. And you, has, yeah. you guys still have plenty of footage in your archive that you're going to look up and then edit and obviously uh, post it, right? Yeah, we still have several destinations that we want to compile, like Thailand. Mm -hmm. We could do a couple of videos, at least several videos on Thailand. Mm -hmm. There was so much to take in and we were there for almost a month, so we, we had lots of oh. there. Mm -hmm. That was really great, yeah. yeah. Um, those who are listening live or anyone replaying this, um, these guys have uh, a handful of videos on uh, and as you just heard them now there's many many more to come so uh, again all the right reasons why you should follow uh, the channel subscribe uh, comment share you know uh, do all the nice things um, one last question uh, if I may is um, let's pretend a month from now COVID-19 is gone okay the world is back to being normal where will you go next as far as an international destination yeah i think we'll say the same place i know we'll say the same place okay, one two three australia Western australia <laughs> wow. so you have so much left to do there eh? we do it was we just felt at home we really felt welcome we felt safe we we actually built a community which we didn't really talk much about on this show but Having a sense of a community and people that you really, you know, uh, connect with, and uh, yeah, we just we just felt at home there. Um, and I think if we could go back tomorrow uh, safely, um, we absolutely would. So wow. we didn't want to come home. We didn't want to come home. Hey, yeah, um, I know you guys mentioned it was one of the toughest decisions that you guys made. You guys are amazing. Um, Thank you. I had a great time uh, getting to know, and like I said, I'm really looking forward to. 
uh, watching your upcoming videos, uh, especially Australia, uh, New Zealand. Oh, no, sorry, you didn't get to go to New Zealand, but all the countries that you've been to, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I thank uh, both of you for, for being on my show today. No, Our thank pleasure. you. We've thank really you. enjoyed it. So. Thank you, and we look forward to getting to know some of your followers. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, I already, I, glancing through, I see people saying they've already subscribed and stuff. Again, um, I, I can't expect a, a better answer than that. Yes, subscribe, uh, watch their videos. Uh, you got their website and, and Instagram handles and, and all the fancy stuff. Um, I want to have you guys back on the show, maybe not for two hours, but maybe, let's say, even a 15-minute update a year from now just to see how you guys are doing yeah oh, we'd love to thank you very much thanks yeah now i did something new today i recorded it so i gotta see how big the file is so maybe i'll find a way to to send it to you guys if you want to share with your uh your audience but uh both of you have been awesome i thank you very much for uh for for joining my show thanks take care we'll be in touch yeah nice thank you so you. much so have a good one guys Bye -bye. cheers thank you